Hello everybody, and uh, welcome to, do you know what, I'll do this at the top. I always do that. Hello everybody, and uh, welcome to the woods. Uh, I left my car about 10 minutes ago. I'm already absolutely shattered and I'm covered in mud, which I think constitutes the start of quite a good morning. Uh, I'm out on my bike, as you can see, and I used to ride around the trails in these woods as a youth, but uh, I've not been back for about 10 or 15 years. So the plan today is to rediscover this area and talk a little bit about some photography products that actually aren't photography products, but I think could benefit photographers, like adventure photographers, outdoors photographers, people like me, basically, who, who like to, to get muddy. Uh, before I talk about those, though, I would like to quickly touch on the sponsor of today's video, which is a photography product, an actual photography product, or a videography product, a camera product, basically, which is Lexar's 2000X, not doing a very good job of that. Yes, there we go, 2000X professional SD card. So this basically is a super fast SD card. It's UHS-2 rated, as you might be able to see by the two pins on the back. It's got read speeds of 300 megabytes a second, write speeds of 260 megabytes a second, and it's V90 rated, which essentially means that it eats my 4K footage for breakfast. Uh, it's available in capacities up to 128 gigabytes, and if you're after a super fast SD card that can deal with loads and loads of real high resolution footage and lots of high resolution images, then this might be for you, the, the 2000X from Lexar. So yeah, a big thank you to them. As some of you might have noticed recently, I've been getting more interested in things like color grading. And I've been shooting 4K 10-bit footage a lot more. And uh, yeah, that card has really helped me to do that. Lots of you probably haven't noticed because I'm not very good at color grading, but I'm hoping to, to try and improve. Anyway, non-photography product to the trails. Right then folks, first photography, non-photography product is this water filter by a company called Sawyer. Basically, you just fill up this bag that comes with the water filter. I'm not doing a very good job of it. Phil, come on. That'll do. And then you put this filter on top, like so. And then you can just either drink this, yeah. very nice or you can pour it out squeeze it out into a bottle like so excellent product in a place like this where it always rains as it is doing right now not so good in a desert I appreciate that uh, but it basically means that when you've got a camera bag full of camera gear that's already heavy you don't also need to take a day's water out with you if you're sure that you're going to be coming somewhere with running water which is a big help and uh, yeah Works in Wales, not, not everywhere. Stop raining. Oh, that was wet. Um, it's still raining about an hour later, which is quite funny really when you consider one of the other things I'm going to talk about in a minute. Rain isn't really a problem for mountain biking. It is a problem for making videos because I can only find one lens cloth in my bag. It turns out I needed to bring more photography gear, actual photography gear. Never mind. Anyway, the second non-photography photography bit of kit is, um, well, a first aid kit. So I reckon one of these is worth taking every time you go out to, uh, well, like the woods or the mountains or anywhere we can cut your finger. And as such, I have plasters in here. I've got uh, germaline in here, antibacterial cream for the cuts. Ibuprofen in case you just end up in a bit of pain with blisters or something. Uh, what else? Imodium. Oh, I hope I don't need that. I suppose if the water filter stops working, that, that might come in handy. Uh, and finally, Tic Tacs, which have absolutely no medical value, but uh, I find they're quite good at stopping the um, tears. I, uh, I came home, <laughs> as you can see, by the fact that I'm not stood in the driving rain anymore. I ended up having to use that lens cloth to uh, wipe my glasses because I, I could see less than the GoPro could see. And then when it was covered in mud and little bits of rock and stuff, I couldn't really use on my lenses anymore. So uh, 
I'm making excuses, really. I, I just didn't want to be in the rain anymore. Anyway, uh, this is item number three of non-photography related stuff that might help your photography. It's a paper map, which is sort of plan C as far as my navigation tools go, but this does have a couple of useful advantages over other kinds of map. Number one, it's laminated, and therefore it can be used as a seat when you want to sit on like a wet rock or a tree stump or something. So that's pretty good. Also, you can use it to stand on like Joey did in Friends so that you can get yourself into the map and work out exactly where you are. It's actually not that helpful. Uh, but yeah, as I say, this is plan C really. This is what I use when everything else fails. Now plan B is basically one of these maps, but on my phone. So I've got the OS Maps app, which looks like that, just looks like an OS map, but on your phone. The advantage of having it on your phone though, is that uh, your phone's got GPS, and therefore it can show you exactly where you are, which means you don't need to be that good at reading maps, as I'm not, to know where you are at all times. Now the reason that that is only plan B, is that I like to kind of pre-plan my routes most of the time, and to do that, I use an app called Kamoot. Uh, so Kamoot is basically a really simple service that allows you to plot an exact route before you leave the house, and then you can follow that exact route when you have left the house. Which sounds very simple, but uh, it works great. So I've got the Kamoot app on my phone, I've also got a Kamoot app on my Garmin, which means that I can have two GPS devices following the same route in case one of them runs out of battery, which is what I typically do. So it's great for hiking, great for cycling, great for mountain biking. I use it all the time, and this is sort of plan A for my navigation. You can also use it to discover routes that other people have done, which uh, I find quite interesting from time to time as well. So yeah, whenever I go on the bike, or even just for a hike, I'll check out Kamoot, see if anyone's done a route similar to mine that I might fancy, or I'll just make it up as I go along on the computer before I leave. And uh, that is typically how I decide where I'm going to go for a photography journey. And there are lots of photography specific apps to help with that, things like photo pills, where you can work out where the sun's gonna be at particular times. But that's for another video, because that's a, that's a photography product. And we're not talking about photography products today, for some reason. I forget why. Uh, thing number four that's not entirely related to photography that can help you as a photographer is a number of weather services. <clears throat> and I will completely understand if you don't take my advice on weather because today it wasn't supposed to rain and yet it did. And if you follow this channel for a while, you'll know that I don't always have the, the best luck slash skill at uh, understanding what's gonna happen with the weather. The, uh, the key to my apparent lack of success when judging the weather is to use multiple services. Now here in the UK, I like to use an app called Met Office, which is a very generic weather app, but largely I find it fairly accurate, I would say. I hesitated then because I don't find any weather app really accurate, but for the most part, I think it's pretty good. I mean, there will be times when it says full sun, but you'll be able to see clouds in the sky. And there'll be other times when it says full sun and it'll be chucking it down with rain all day. But maybe that's just Wales. Uh, other apps, the weather app on iPhone, much the same as the weather app on Android, which I assume is done by Google, I find them both to be the least useful weather apps I've ever come across. I mean, here at least, if you only looked at these apps, you would never ever go and take photos because it's the most pessimistic forecast always. It always just says rain for Wales, and largely that's right. But if there's ever a sunny day, it won't say that on these apps. It'll still say rain. So I don't really look at these apps, to be honest, the weather app on the iPhone or the Android. Um, occasionally I might check just out of interest, but I don't think they're particularly useful tools. What is a useful tool is an app called Clear Outside. Uh, now Nigel Danson put me onto this, actually, and it's fantastic because it shows you total cloud, low cloud, medium cloud, high cloud, uh, wind, direction of wind, chance of fog, where the International Space Station is, visibility, frost, dew point, humidity, shows you loads of different stuff across a massive table, and I find it to be fairly accurate, actually. And I've used this a lot for uh, planning photography trips, particularly the day before. This app is brilliant at being able to forecast things like temperature inversions and stuff, which is much better than any of the other apps manage, as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, this app, uh, Clear Outside, is a winner as far as planning uh, photography trips. 
The other service I look at locally here is the Mountain Weather Information Service. So this gives a three day forecast ahead of time and it'll show you things like a chance of cloud free summit in a percentage. It'll show you how cold it's gonna be at 900 meters or just under 3000 feet, which is fairly good for Wales because that's about summit level for lots of different mountains. It'll show you the freezing level, uh, cloud on the hills, how wet it's gonna be. I mean, weather forecast basically, but specifically for the mountains and I find that quite useful and again, quite accurate. And the last thing I check wherever I'm going is uh, to see if there are any webcams for the area that I'm going to. Uh, so before you leave your house or your Airbnb or wherever you're staying before going on a photography trip, it's really useful to be able to look at webcams to see if the weather is actually aligning to the weather forecasts for a particular place. And uh, yeah, I'll always check to see what the webcams are saying. And actually these webcams aren't working today for some reason. Why has that stopped working? There's a good webcam of the Ogwen Valley normally, but not working today. On the one that is working, it looks miserable. Anyway, yeah, as I say, I, I completely understand if you don't hang off my every word as far as weather forecasting is concerned. Mm. I've not been crying. Uh, the last thing you need is a head torch. I've not needed it today because uh, well, it's not gone dark. But this time of year here, it goes dark about half three. So you can never be 100% sure that you're gonna get back to the car by then. So it makes sense to have a, a head torch with you. It is actually three o'clock though, and I'm not that close to the car. So I, I should actually crack on. Um, yes, head torch. This one is useless. It's got two settings, both of which, ooh. Just broken it. That's not ideal because this was my backup head torch. I've lost my actual photography one, so to get a new one. Uh, anyway, there are a couple of settings to look out for when you're buying a head torch specifically for photography. Now, lots of people rave about having a red mode, which is essentially a red light as opposed to a white light, and that supposedly keeps your night vision intact. I think it works. I don't think it works as well as having a really low light version of a white light as a mode on your head torch. You don't have to have a, a really useless head torch all the time. You can have a really bright light, but also a mode with a really low light. And by low light, I don't know the, the technical terms, but I'm talking like, imagine walking down a pitch black road with nothing but your phone screen guiding you. And I'm not talking about the torch on your phone, I'm talking about the actual screen sort of guiding you down the road. Enough light basically to set your tripod up and your camera settings and stuff without affecting your, your surroundings. That's what you want to look out for. But as I say, I don't know the technical terms. So I have to try and find one myself. Uh, now that concludes my list of non-photography products that might help photographers. And I might do a winter version soon because yesterday my, uh, my new crampons turned up, <clears throat> which keeps stabbing me. So yeah, maybe, maybe look out for that to come. For the most part though, I, I imagine it'll be more photography related stuff in future. In fact, I might, address what I'm hoping for in photography gear for the next year in the next video, just to bring this channel back on a, an even keel. Uh, thanks for watching in any case though, and uh, also thank you to Lexar for sponsoring this week's video. Quite ironic really, this is a, uh, this is a lens cloth, which I didn't take with me. It's just been on my, my table. Yeah. Thank you for watching, I'll, uh, I'll see you next time.